AVC John here. Um, I've been neglectful of the VC recently, both the Facebook version and um, and the more importantly the YouTube version. I've been so busy at work that I've I've been trying to keep up with people's videos, etc. But um, I've not been contributing much. But recently, I just come back from Portugal, by the way, this last weekend. Uh, we had four days there. And I've been thinking about, a couple of weeks ago, I got to thinking about Grails. Grail, the sort of much used Grail record on Facebook, people are putting Grail, Grail. And I got to thinking, it's a little bit overused. And I was on the train this afternoon coming back from work. And started making a few notes about what constitutes a Grail. Now, the derivation of it clearly is from... Um, the Holy Grail. Now I did look up on Wikipedia, so I'm not saying it's necessarily right, but it's it's a combination of different myths and uh, different uh, religions, which culminated in um, the, the the concept of a Holy Grail was obviously some sort of chalice or salver or plate used in um, a religious ceremony, and the particular Holy Grail which most people immediately springs to mind is the thing that's featured in, say, Indiana Jones and the uh, the Last Crusade and the Knights Templar and all of this business. Essentially, it's something rare that is valuable. And I, I was jotting down what the, the various types of Grail record might be. Um, so these might be uh, artists who release a few records then become very famous. And so their early works sold in limited numbers and then subsequently they sell large numbers so the early stuff becomes valuable. So here's, here's an, an example of one of those types of records. It's David Bowie's second album on the Philips label, subsequently released in the, in the US as a Space Oddity with Ziggy era photos, but in fact it's from about four years prior to that. Then you get the artist who did nothing in their lifetime but becomes subsequently famous. Nick, Gre Nick Drake is probably the um, most common uh, or easiest example to find. And his first three albums, Brighter Later, Five Leaves Left, uh, Five Leaves Left, and Pink Moon, you'd be looking at £800 plus if you found a mint copy of that. But the grails that we're able to find ourselves. Um, on a regular basis, although those albums um, by major artists released in the 90s um, when vinyl is nadir. And I've got a few examples of those myself. Now, I did, when I first started um, getting back into vinyl, like many people in the VCR, I was a massive fan of vinyl. Then CDs came and started buying those, and then had an epiphany and decided I was going back to vinyl. So, substantially and um, for me that was in 2008 so and when I first started doing that I was buying a lot of stuff off eBay trying to fill gaps and they didn't have to be grail albums in fact it, the opposite I wouldn't spend a lot of money on them and um, but then I stopped buying things off eBay because I don't really like it to be honest I bought quite a few things off there but I don't like it I like the, the find them in the wild and that means so much more to me and I've got a few albums that examples so there's Pearl Jam 10 uh, this was a gift Kate Bush the red shoes um, Mariah Carey um, Merry Christmas um, talked about that in the Christmas albums I did uh, last year this one for Jesse Travis the man who with the um, bonus 12 inch single in there that one and Stereophonics performance and cocktails all of these are major bands or artists and they were all released in the 90s and they were all found um, in the wild for a fairly cheap price. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Rob Clark, the man formerly known as Elovox, posted on Facebook saying something like, would anybody, his view is he would never buy a record just be, because of its intrinsic value. He'd always buy a record because of the sound, of, because of the music that, that he was after and asking what other people's opinions were. Am I, I'm feeling in the camp that I would spend, I have spent a lot of money on certain records, but I would never buy a record just because it was valuable. I would only ever buy it because I wanted to listen to it. Then, not the weekend just gone, because I was away, the weekend before, I probably said in my previous emails that I've sort of stopped buying a lot of records recently. I've been listening to a lot of the CDs that I've got and a lot of the records 
fundamentally that I just wanted to um, take a bit of a break from it and I think um, Mr Hall of Fame, Brandon, he did the same and it's quite cathartic really because you're not driven to go and buy something every weekend and I'm not criticising people to do that because I will go back to it but what it's meant is I've got a bit more money available as my sort of notional budget so I decided that I was going to look for a couple of grails on eBay now these are proper grails, they're not they're records that I really, really want, and they are rather expensive to acquire. And as luck would have it, I found two of the three that I'm interested in, so I'm going to show you the first one. And the first one is this. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that this is a gap in my collection. And this is a sealed copy of Devils and Dust by Bruce Springsteen. Which came out, I can't even remember the um, the year now, I think it was late 90s, but it might be, I think it's 1998. Um, now, what am I talking about? It's 2005. Um, that was issued, I don't know if it was a reissue. Just bear with me a minute, I need to get the exact date on this one to satisfy myself. CD year and that was 2005 so before I'd started buying vinyl in a big way um, again this came out I bought the CD which I was listening to at the weekend um, and I missed out on on the vinyl now that is a sealed copy and I've paid this was a buy it now price and I thought it was a bit on the top side but I've paid what I think is the market value for a sealed copy of that album now I did say to Harry I was going to um, when I opened it I would film it and I'm sort of tempted to because I'm not into that keep them mint unless I've got two copies and I haven't that is going to get played and I, I came to a bit of a deal I made the guy an offer and he counter offered and that's what we came to and he was a really nice bloke and we had a, a good exchange of text but that's a sealed copy of Devils and Dust from 2005, eight years ago. However, I also found on eBay in the States another record which is, is in my opinion, I think it's probably the rarest of the Springsteen albums that have, have been major releases. In fact it was so rare I didn't even know it existed until um, about three years ago when I spotted one on eBay. And it was on the it was on the market at a price, and I decided that I wanted to. Uh, uh, I had a fixed figure that I was prepared to pay for it. Anyway, this is, and this is the very last piece in the jigsaw of my vinyl collection of major releases on on twelve inch for Bruce Springsteen, and it's this, released in nineteen ninety eight. It's the vinyl version of 18 tracks, which in its in turn was 18 tracks taken from the um, from the box set, which was released in 1998. Now, I think if the box set was four CDs, was released now as a copy up there, um, called tracks. I think it probably would be a proper box set in vinyl. But at the time, only this, and I got this from a chap in America, and I paid what I think is £50 below the market price. Um, the vinyl is in excellent condition and the two inners are in excellent condition but the outer sleeves dinked a bit on the side there. So those are VC are two of the three Grail albums that I've been after and they meet my definition of a Grail. They're rare, they're not going to reduce in value, they're not going to go up in value and I really like the records. And the bonus with this one is, he even sent me, he packed it really well, this, in, in one week this came from the US, he even sent me, I'm not completely unasked for, I didn't know these were coming, two black and white glossy photo, 10 by 8 photos as well. So, um, from having an incomplete Bruce Springsteen collection, VC, I now have a complete set of Bruce Springsteen albums. Um, hope this finds you well. I um, hope to be catching up with the VC a bit more and uh, take care.